And the U.S. stock index futures pointed to a negative open today as investors await fresh data while taking note of the decline seen in markets overseas. In the previous session, U.S. equities finished in the red as the broader market failed to be boosted by an uptick in tech stocks. The S&P 500 also posted its first three-day losing streak since August. Now, looking to today's session on the data front, mortgage applications are due out at 7 a.m. Eastern Time, followed by ADP National Employment Report at 8.15 a.m. Eastern Time and productivity and cost data at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. The figures come two days before the U.S. non-farm payrolls data for November due out on Friday. Switching focus to corporate earnings, Brown Foreman, H&R Block, American Eagle Outfitters, and Broadcom are all expected to publish their latest financial figures. And uh, President Donald Trump is set to announce that the U.S. will recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital, with senior administration officials saying the embassy will be moved there, yet noting that this could take years. The move is controversial in the Middle East and has been criticized by Turkey, among others. In Asia, markets fell sharply almost across the board as the main index in Japan lost nearly 2%. The session in Asia followed overnight declines in U.S. stocks where the S&P 500 posted its first three-day losing streak since August. Japan's Nikkei 225 dropped 445.34 points. Across the Korean street, the Kospi slipped 35.75 points. Australia's ASS 200 closed down 26.11 points. In Hong Kong, the Hansen index fell 620.74 points. Chinese mainland markets reversed some of their losses to close mix. The Shanghai Composite fell 9.54 points and the Shenzhen Composite advanced 12.66 points. And back here in Africa, shares in Steinoff International lost more than half their value today after the furniture retailer said it will launch an investigation into accounting irregularities. Its chief executive resigned and it postponed full-year results. Steinoff South African shares slumped 60% to a seven-year low of 17.56 rand as the Johannesburg Securities Exchange opened, recovering to 22 rand, still down 52%. The company said late on Tuesday the chief executive, Marcus Josti, had resigned with immediate effect after the discovery of new information prompted the company's supervisory board to ask consultants PwC to perform an independent investigation. The furniture retailer postponed its results announcement and a webcast scheduled for today until further notice. And the World Bank Group has approved a $1.15 billion development policy loan for Egypt to support the country's economic reform programs. The loan is the last in a series of three annual loans totaling $3.15 billion issued from 2015 to 2017. The $1.15 billion loan, which supports Egyptian economic reforms aimed at creating jobs, ensuring energy security, strengthening public finances, and enhancing business competitiveness, including financing contributions of $500 million from the World Bank Group, $500 million from the African Development Bank, and $150 million from Britain. The International Monetary Fund has begun talks with Congo Republic over a bailout to help the oil producer reduce its rapidly rising debt. Total government revenue has slid by nearly a third since 2015, owing largely to lower global crude prices and public or publicly guaranteed debt spiked this year to 110% of GDP. The debt crisis has led credit rating agencies to judge Congo at risk of default on its $363 million euro bond, a situation uh, increased by a $1 billion legal dispute in a United States court. I'll we'll take a break now. And when we return, Nigeria's central bank governor speaks on the progress made so far in Nigeria's economic development. Just stay with us.